uh, one thing that was really interesting is like how you say and you, know, you could have an expert in Arabic, yeah, in Egypt, but you can connect you can connect that tutor we could say with someone here also in Arabic. So tell us a bit more about Scudel. So um, at the most basic level right now is it's a platform that connects students with tutors. So mm -hmm. students can ask questions on any subject. Tutors can answer these questions because it gives them visibility. And then to follow up, you can book lessons with the teachers. I think kind of this idea that everybody has something to teach is pretty incredible when you align it with where the world is going to, you know, being recognized for what you're good at, right? Mm -hmm. um, Instagram has done a pretty good job of that. So people have become famous for whatever. Um, and I always phrase it as Scoodle needs to create like the Kim Kardashians of education, um, meaning in 10 years time, like it, it's weird if you think about it, <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> um, th there were certain teachers that I've had in my life, like in primary school, for example, Mr. Skiller, hopefully one day this gets to him. <laughs> Amazing teacher. He used to like draw cartoons to explain concepts. It was like, wow. Yeah. But you can't relate because you have no idea who he is and you can never come across him. Mm. Um, so Teachers like that should get a certain caliber of recognition um, that is very hard to get right now. Mm. Um, it exists in the professional space because like, hey, you want to find out about me? You go to my LinkedIn. You can see where I've worked and things like that. Mm. Teachers don't hang out there because it's not really made for them. And they can't do much on Facebook either because that's too social. Yeah. So this ability to really create an identity for people that add knowledge and value to the world is a very powerful thing. Um, and that's what we want to be able to create. Mm, really interesting. Okay. And um, how? What's the response been in terms of like users? You know, is it just? Would you say it's just uh, mainly from the UK, or have you got? Like... Um, we're, we're focusing on the UK intentionally. Um, okay. So th there's this thing in tech generally. Uh, there are kind of different categories where mm. what you'd call a marketplace. Um, a marketplace is when somebody has to need somebody to get a desired outcome like yeah. ebay there's a buyer and a seller and airbnb there's a host and you know a traveler whatever um mm -hmm. in our case we uh, our case are we need to connect two sides a teacher and a student yeah um so what that means is kind of for it to really work you need to have the right concentration of both mm -hmm. imagine having like tons of teachers but nobody to teach yeah it doesn't work and equally imagine having tons of key learners but there's no teachers available Again, it doesn't work. Um, so for the business that we're building, it makes a lot of sense to focus on where we are, mm. make sure the people that we have love the experience that they're getting and to grow out from that. Um, so, so far, there's um, I think over 15,000 people now that have used Scoodle um, from the UK. So it's very concentrated in, in the way that it works. Mm. Um, those users have read the answers in the platform 120,000 times, and that's continuing to grow, which is kind of the beauty of the Q&A piece. Mm. When somebody answers a question, it's not just for that student anymore. That knowledge is now accessible to everybody else everywhere. My life didn't make that much sense, unfortunately. <laughs> um, I just studied things that I found interesting, to be honest. So yeah. um, at college, I liked philosophy. I liked economics. And I did both. Uh, yeah. At university, I studied politics and economics solely because I found it interesting. I had no other real reason yeah, yeah. beyond that. Um, I was interested in tech as a space, like I kind of built my first business at university. That process of building something mm. is particularly exciting. Like you can't really match that with um, anything else. Like you're piecing things together and something that didn't exist now exists. And, you know, you're the driver of that and it's super mm. exciting. Um, so that was really, really cool to have. Um, in our case, a lot of the tech is built in-house by my co-founders. And now we've made kind of our first couple of hires. Um, so it's it's important, I think, to be tech aware i'd phrase it as um because you want to know what's going on especially if you're building um a business that's within the tech space mm. but in my kind of skill sets in particular i'm not the coder i don't code um i don't know what i do but um <laughs> this idea that you're meant to complement your um, team members not necessarily substitute whatever mm. they do so they code and they build the actual product and on my side i do my best to um, you know, try and fundraise and get investors on board and speak mm. to customers and um, kind of look into the product roadmap and things like that. So it works very well as a kind of combination of things. Well, you must, it must work well because what recently <laughs> the co-founder of Twitter, um, is, uh, am, I, am I right in saying, yeah. um, invested. Um, um, so yeah. how on earth did that happen? Because that's like, that's big, man. <laughs> that was pretty cool. Yeah. Um, so we... Uh, 
we pitched at the demo day. Um, sorry, demo day is this thing that startups do. They like basically speak for a few minutes to a mm. bunch of investors. Um, so we were part of the University of Oxford's uh, program, which is pretty cool because we're in education. Um, and the keynote speaker that they had was this guy, the, the co-founder co mm. of Twitter. Um, and did you know that, by the way? Sorry. Just, sorry? just to interrupt. Did you know that he was going to be there? Yes. Okay, you I knew, don't yeah. know when I knew that. I knew that um, at some point building up to the, the okay. event. Um, and <clears throat> so it's interesting because he, he founded Twitter and Medium um, as well. Mm, okay. uh, but there's a third company which people don't know about called Jelly. Right, um, okay. Jelly is a Q&A app which has this idea that people have things that they want to teach and things that they want to learn, oh, okay. which is like a perfect fit. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it wasn't even like, oh my God, you started Twitter. It's like, hey, like, what did you learn? You know, <laughs> um, what did you wish you did differently? So he sold that third business to Pinterest. Um, and I was just super curious to find out how it worked mm. um, and what we could do and what we could learn from his experiences. So that was pretty good. Uh, <clears throat> and then we had a few meetings um, based out in, uh, in San Francisco, um, mm. I think a month or two later. Um, so I reached out to him again saying, okay, we're coming. You, we should really meet up. It'd be nice. Mm -hmm. um, and I was like, yeah, sure, you can come over. So we met him at the headquarters in, in Twitter. And again, it wasn't about uh, the investment side of things per se. It was actually yeah. just to learn um, mm. because he's been there before. He shared a lot of his experiences. Uh, and then a few emails later, like for him, a lot of it was centered around uh, kind of his investment philosophy. Should this thing exist in the world? If the answer is yes, he wants to be there to support them. Um, and oftentimes you find that the, the vision piece is a big part of the culture behind very mm. credible investors. Um, would this thing make a meaningful difference to the world such that without it, the world would look different? Mm. Um, and if that's the world that I want to be in, then you know, do whatever you can to make that possible. So for us, this idea of um, really creating this identity for the teaching space mm. uh, is such a powerful thing if you think about it that um, I guess it's compelling for us and uh, luckily it's compelling for um, a few of the investors as well. How important is this like networking and meeting people face to face uh, and, and these concepts? Must stop. <laughs> um, I don't know, networking is a really weird word that people don't like. It sounds yeah. too fake and like ugh, I have to network <laughs> speak to people yeah um but really it's if you have something interesting to share and you want to have a conversation that's actually all it is if anything the genuine part is the biggest thing that you can get mm. because nobody likes fake conversations um so for the most part in my case like it's uh having those conversations and being in the space where the conversation takes place mm. um and there's this Thing that is phrased as paying it forward um, or n not really knowing where something will lead to something else mm. and I mean really not knowing um, so to give you a quick story um, I remember so we had a kind of a smaller round of investment um, back in October of mm. 2017 and the way that that investment so some of the investors happened at least was we were pitching at this demo day so you think okay we're pitching in front of a ton of investors that's where the money comes from because yeah. there's investors everywhere. Mm. But there was a journalist at this uh, at this event and he asked, uh, so I, I spoke to him, he asked me for a call about the event. He's like, hey, these guys are yeah. great, this and that. Um, and I said, hey, by the way, like, do you want to feature at Scoodle? Because you, know, you should ask for things. And guess yeah. what he said? No, because <laughs> um, they want a story because you know, yeah, it's not yeah. just about story selling that sells businesses. Exactly. Um, so I said, like, you know, I, I paid for my way through university, built a business, all of that. Um, how does that sound? It's like, yeah, that sounds pretty good. Um, on the back of that article, somebody reached out to him and he said, hey, do you want to meet this person? Um, I was like, yeah, sure. And this person was, do you guys remember Miniclip? Yeah, of the, course, yeah. yeah. Everyone knows Miniclip, right? <laughs> the games company. Of course, man. Um, so this guy was one of the C-suite guys at Miniclip. Um, we're a very big business now, by the way. Yeah. They've had like one and a half billion downloads. Um, really? Yeah, it's crazy. Uh, I haven't heard of it. They, they shifted time. to mobile. Most of the mobile ah, games, I say most, a lot right. of mobile mm. games are... Yeah. Um, mini clip and one thing led to another and he along with a few other guys from that company invested mm. um that's not a route that i could kind of pinpoint and say this is how it's going to work out i pitch here i meet this guy mm. this guy introduces me to this guy and this happens it just worked out in this way that i could never have planned um wow. but none of that would have happened if a i wasn't in the room to begin with 
And then B, funnily enough, I never asked the question to the guy to say, yeah. hey, could you feature us? So you never really know where things come from. Um, but what you can say for certain is that it definitely won't happen if you're not there. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so let's let's stick to that. So we're at the beginning. <laughs> We've got an idea, right? Because I'm genuinely interested. Cause I don't know. Like, I don't know this stuff. Yeah. If I want to make an app tomorrow, let's say I've got the idea. So Ismail, what's... What would you what would you do next? Think about whether you need to write a line of code or build an app as your starting point because usually the answer is no you don't. Wait, um, hold on a so second. what uh, why I say that is because I, I, I think about it from the perspective of Scoodle, right? Yeah. Um it, it's not the case for every single like business, but some businesses at least. In our case, what is the quickest way that I can exist in a week? Because mm. think about it, what, what is the core thing that we're solving? Somebody wants to learn, somebody wants to teach. Let's put them together, mm. right? So what I really need is, say, five on each side. Five teachers, five students. Yeah. Send a couple messages on WhatsApp or whatever. Get a list of those five, put in a Google form. That's a couple minutes' work to get the form up and running and maybe a few hours to get the list of names and numbers and emails. Mm. Good. That's like you've got customers ready. Now go and match them. See what happens. Mm. Um, you start realizing that there are certain problems that exist that you would never have noticed by just writing an app. For example, um, location. Maybe you assume that people would just happily jump onto online lessons mm -hmm. until you realize, well, hold on a minute. Why don't, I don't get it. Like, it's a great teacher, just do it online. Yeah. No, I, don't, I don't want my, my kid to learn online. That's like business problem number one. Okay, go and solve that. Um, the reason why I prefer this approach usually is because imagine spending, I don't know how many hours or how much money that it would take to get the first version of your app ready to then learn that problem it's like damn it like why did i just build this thing when yeah. that was a week's worth of learning if that mm. um so try and exist as quickly as possible um i personally don't put too much weight um on ideas because execution is what really wins at the end of the day mm. like um i always say this example of like i i, I think airbnb is one of the stupidest ideas i've ever heard um, <laughs> if, if you actually think about what at, at the core of it yeah it's let a stranger live in your house with all your stuff inside <laughs> um and then they'll give you some money that's what it is okay and didn't that, think of it like that. that isn't <laughs> and you think about how we grew up yeah, yeah, yeah. um that isn't that doesn't make any sense yeah but it worked um and it worked not because quote unquote the idea was great. i mean in, in hindsight yeah it was a worthwhile idea coaches yeah, were shifting yeah. people became more trusting and whatever but at the time, the idea didn't sound like it made it, it made mm. that much sense, but it worked out. Um, if somebody gave me the idea for Uber like 10 years ago, before it existed, I wouldn't have made it the company that it is today. Mm. Like it's not the idea that wins, it's the team and the execution. Mm. So uh, Ismail, what else would you, uh, general tips now um, for people wanting to start the app, you know, what else would you say that you should think of really? I keep coming back to that one core tip because it's the one thing that most people will never do, which is to just start. Okay. Um, there is like, there's very little kind of point emphasizing one of these other things, assuming that we're speaking to people who have ideas in their mind, mm -hmm. right? What should I do right now? I should exist. Everything other than existing right now is not worth your time because these are problems that you're solving too early. Mm. Problems that you don't even know if, if they exist or not. Um, so I keep coming back to just figure out how to exist, mm. like whatever it is. So like looking at, you know, the company that you're building, like mar marrying people off. Mm. Um, what is the, the quickest way to start to validate whether it's a good idea? Yeah. Find people that want to get married. Mm. Um, see if they're happy to pay you X. And maybe X is too high or it's too low, I don't know. But you won't know by just thinking uh, in your own mm. mode, that type of thing. Um, so I always phrase it as, if you have an idea that's not like, I don't know, building a rocket, um, <laughs> what can you do to exist in a week? Yeah. If you can't do it in a week, cut it down. Mm. Build an even, even more simple version. And now ask yourself again, can I do this this week? Um, in our case, it's, can you get five students and five tutors in a week? Mm. If the answer to that is yes, do everything that you can to make that happen. Um, and this idea of kind of aligning yourself towards achieving something very tangible um, on a weekly basis and growing that is what's, at least in the startup space, is high, this idea of exponential growth. Yeah. If you can grow like 10% every week and you can sustain that for a year, I don't know what the number is, but it's a very, very high number. Even if you start off at like a pound, 
um, it becomes very big very very quickly mm. um, there was this idea of I forgot what the saying was we'd rather have like a pound a day and have it like double every day uh, or like 10 grand up front um, mm. and a pound a day double every day for 30 days is actually more because it's this mm. concept of exponential growth that people don't really comprehend. Inshallah. Okay. Um, coming back to the word, a key word, which I don't want to forget, which is vision. Um, anything you want to do. I mean, it's not just about, we're not talking about just starting an app. We're not talking about entrepreneurs or, you know, people with startups. We're not talking about just leaders. But just in general, like, um, how important is it? Because I know, Smile, you, you, you mentioned this word quite a lot. Vision. Having that vision. Um, would you say that it's possible to get from you know, uh, you know, A to B, uh, or, or the beginning to the end without a vision. Is that possible, Ismail? It depends on where you see the end. Mm -hmm. um, I used to think this vision stuff was a waste of time, personally, mm -hmm. because it was very fluffy and wishy-washy. Like a motivational term. Yeah. Like, yeah. Um, especially like all these random people on like Instagram and Facebook, <laughs> inspirers <laughs> and motivators, and like, oh, come on. Yeah. Um, I think what I realized over time is the importance in kind of w what role the vision plays in making you want to do what you're doing mm. um, and you can very easily forget that um, especially again in my space of trying to build something um, you get lost in bugs like things go wrong yeah, um, and things keep going wrong and um, one thing on the investor space that I face in particular is like it's very easy to talk about, you know, the investor that went well, who's high profile, and that's great. It's like, oh my God, like, that must have been so easy to get done. Mm. Um, but there's so many rejections that take place behind the scenes that nobody knows about. Like, yeah. And it hurts as well, don't get me wrong. Yeah. Um, because with a, sm a, a small company like this, it's not a rejection to your uh, business. That's not what's happening. It's a rejection to you because you are your business, Yeah, yeah. right? And nobody likes to be rejected, mm. you know? So you really feel this. And despite all of that, you have to go at it again mm. and try it again and again and again. And so you think, okay, when this happens and things like really suck and you're really low, um, what do you do to keep yourself going? Why are you bothering? Um, and that's, at least for me, where I find this idea of aligning your mind towards something that's particularly big, a worldview, a vision that really matters, mm. starts to make a lot, it starts to make a lot of sense. And part of that is, speak about it a lot too like it, it's exciting to share your dream and to have you be like whoa that sounds so cool you need that mm. um, but if that's not there you're just going to get stuck in bugs and rejection that's not a great feeling yeah and and what is your what is the vision of Scooter like a, um, in summary <laughs> designing a world where you can choose teachers and not schools um, okay that is at the very core of what we want to do because mm. Right now, the recognition is always the institution. Mm. But the real skill sets, the real knowledge is never the institution, it's always the teacher. Yeah, very um, true. So creating a world um, where they have that first place position. I phrase that as the Kim Kardashian of education before, but that really, <laughs> oh, really, gosh. really counts. I was counts. hoping you didn't repeat that again. Um, <laughs> that it, it counts, it counts. Like, it needs to happen. Teachers need tens of millions of followers because yeah. they're just pretty damn awesome teachers. Um, and that's a good enough thing to work for. Wow. Uh, and uh, Ismail, what's like the, let's say, a term uh, that you have come across that is weird, strange? If I'd come across a weird term, I would very quickly get rid of that term and <laughs> make it into something simpler. Okay. Um, I like I like because it. Because your ability to like do anything isn't measured by how fancy the words yeah. are. Yeah, yeah. Um, and if you think about like even really cool public speakers, it's very rarely the one that uses tons of jargon. Mm. You know what I mean? Like it's it's actually easier to speak to somebody even on stage when it feels very conversational. Yeah. Um, so it's in my view, it's better to avoid these things and just to describe something that the audience can relate to. Mm. What's the future of? of tech would you say Ismail what, what would you say is the future um, even even if it's uh, you personally I mean are you going to stop at Scoodle are you, are you planning to take it to, to uh, the next level are you planning to explore any other avenues when it comes to tech um, I want Scoodle to be a company that's the size of something like Airbnb or LinkedIn mm, okay um, and to do that at the bare minimum it's a 10 year mission um, and it's a mission that should reach hundreds of millions of people 
Mm. Um, so that's where my focus and my heart and my mind and everything else uh, is pretty much aligned. So, like in ten years' time, what um, what do both of you expect to see? That's I crazy. End of my sound. I think automation is increasingly becoming a big thing. Um, it's been done on a micro level, like self checkouts, for example. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, um, a ton of people aren't working there anymore, but taking that to the level where it becomes part of the the average person's living experiences. Um, so things like you know self-driving Ubers, mm. which then come down to the price point of actual bus travel, um, mm. which would be very interesting to see. Um, even within the home automation, like your, the, the Google Homes and smart tech, it's no longer just a thing that Bill Gates has in his house because it's just like, wow, how do you even do that? Yeah. But things are so well built together that the average person can spend 50, 150 pounds and actually build a pretty smart home Mm. Where you can control, you know, your heating system when you're not out, and like who your house and you're not there, and things like that. Um, but I think at a grand scale, automation poses very interesting challenges around um, employment, because there's a big narrative mm. and discussion around what happens to those that have been trained to do, you know, whatever X, Y, and Z. Yeah. And now a machine can do it better, which is great. But mm. you know, what then happens to those that aren't able to continue working in the same fields anymore? Likewise, with kind of whether it's taxi drivers, truck drivers, delivery organizations. Mm. Um, so it's a very interesting discussion. I think now there's kind of this whole big research around universal basic income. Yeah. Um, the idea being that, well, there's going to be so much of the world that's not going to be working. Maybe we should just give everybody like a minimum salary to exist. And yeah, mm. it'll be interesting to see how that pans out. And you know, tying it in with school, do you think it was ever going to get a, uh, to a point where teachers are out of jobs because you're learning from a I mean I guess people are turning to Google and stuff anyway for answers but I'm, I'm literally like mm. I literally mean do you think people will be learning from like a, a robot so I think for me personally um, it depends how you define learning because mm. if learning is just about transmitting information then yeah you can use machines now mm. just watch a video it's, it's there already um, but this idea of kind of really powerful inspiration and motivation mm. um, I don't think the human touch can be replaced yeah. Um, if anything, I actually expect to see a, a greater demand in people wanting to join the teaching profession because it's actually very difficult to replace a teacher. Mm, that's a very interesting take. Um, I will add something a little bit more. Yeah, uh, <laughs> just, a, just a little bit. Um, <laughs> yes, just start, but don't be passive with your intentions. Mm. Um, so <clears> what I mean, like if there's anybody that is listening, is like, hey, I really want to do something. On the back of this, you should be setting yourself a very fixed, firm deadline to achieve mm. something by. Um, that's the reason why before, like I emphasize, <clears> what you can do in a week. Yeah. If you really think you can't do it in a week, say a month, say two weeks, say whatever it is you want to put. Uh, but be very, very, very specific. Like hold yourself accountable. Mm. Just saying, oh, I'll build it one day. It's just like, you know, some weird level of procrastination. You're not doing it. Mm. Um, until you exist, you don't exist. Doesn't matter what's in your head. Yeah. Um, so yes, just start, but hold yourself accountable to something very tangible. Um, tell others about it too. Give others an update of that deadline. Tell them to ask you like, hey, how's it going in a mm. week or two's time? So you create that um, almost pressure in yourself to actually get things up and running. Perfect. And uh, where can we find Scoodle? Is it available now on, on iOS? Now and it's, Android? it's everything. Android. Yeah. We love you guys too. Um, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. <laughs> it's Android, iOS um, and on web as well. One of the big things that we push is we're the only platform now that doesn't charge uh, booking fees on both sides. As in tutors mm. don't lose their money and parents don't pay anything extra uh, okay. either. So it's actually a win-win for both sides more than what exists elsewhere. Brilliant.